Hey guys, today's video we're going to be talking about artifacts, we're going to talk about the artifact tier list and we're going to talk about artifact fusion rates because it's very important that you can actually get hold of them. So if you're not familiar, to get to artifacts you go to hero, then you go down to artifact and then if you go to forge, there are three different tiers of materials you can use to forge artifacts. Each of them have different rates for what you will get out at the end. Epic at maximum you can get legendary with a low chance, legendary at max you can get myth with a very small chance, and with the mythic forge you can get myth at a still fairly low rate. In order to get the broken, radiant, and flawless meteorites needed to fuse artifacts, you will need to go to the artifact material raid where you'll fight against a boss Salazar and his ads. I have a, a few videos covering how to do that, so do check them out if you need help. But today we're gonna focus on the existing artifacts, how good they are, how you can get them, and generally a tier list. We're gonna focus on the ones here that are available to fuse for the myth and legendary, not the epic. Generally, just don't worry about the epic. Don't waste your time on myth for upgrading them. But once you get legendary to myth, you can consider using your mithril resource to upgrade. There are a couple of other artifacts that you can get that you don't get through fusion, you have to buy them from the guild shop. That is the Blood Drinker, and that is also Ragnarok, which you also get one copy of from the Storyline mission. Again, I have a guide on the Storyline, it is on my official website though, just go to mabucket.com and go to the guide section and you'll see Storyline there, and that should help you out getting through that. So anyway, let's move on to the actual tier list. So. Here it is on my website. So if you want to go and check it out, it's again mabucky.com and go to the tier list tab at the top and that will take you here. So just to explain how the tier system works in this, S is obviously the best, D is the worst. In any of my tier lists, when I use the star tier, it is basically items or heroes or things that are really, really powerful in very specific situations. So these are things that you may want to build, you may want to use, but they have a very particular time and place. So with all that out of the way, let's have a look. We'll start with the fighter tier working from S down and then we'll go through them one by one. So in my opinion at the top of the fighter tier list we have the scarlet hunt as you can see this increases damage by 20 percent to targets with bleeding obviously this increases with levels the reason it's at the top is because it's the highest damage increase it's just a straight up damage increment it's not attack it's not crit damage it's not giving you crit rate where you might already be 100 percent it's just a massive bonus damage obviously there is a huge stipulation to this this is only going to be beneficial if you have pretty much a salazar you can use komodo but Komodo is not going to be quite as reliable as a Salazar. I have a note down here as well. If, it, if you don't have a Salazar, it becomes a B tier pretty much because it's just good stats. The Myth gear does grant better stats than the Legendary gear. So yeah, the Scarlet Hunt is an incredible artifact. It is a massive bonus damage, but you really want it for Salazar. His bleed up time is very important and you want decent attack speed on Salazar to ma maintain a high uptime of the bleed. Additionally, Salazar's first and third awakenings massively help with the uptime of his bleed. So moving on, we have Ragnarok. This is the one that you gain from the storyline quest series as well as being able to purchase from the guild shop it increases your crit damage at rank one by 12 percent and when your hp is less than 50 percent the crit damage bonus is doubled so 12 to 24 and obviously that will scale with the rank ups while this one does grant its benefit all the time at least half of the benefit all the time it is a bit more niche because you do need to be lower than half hp to get the benefit and it is crit damage as well which i think a lot of people oversubscribe to over attack because you do need a 1-1 one -one balance but having said that i think ragnarok is a pretty good artifact it is incredibly good for cerberus for example cerberus's main source of damage is his death effect when he perishes he leaves a massive pool of damage on the floor and it is based on his stats at the time that he died so Ragnarok granting double crit damage at the moment of his death is going to be a nice damage increase for him. Now the next two at A tier for Fighter are two very new artifacts that were just introduced, the Eye of Sin and the Flawless Blade. Eye of Sin increases AoE damage by 10% and killing enemies grants an extra 5% of AoE damage bonus that lasts for three seconds usually if it stacks it will state that it stacks so i think we can assume it doesn't stack so it'll be a maximum of 15 percent damage increase so this would actually be lower than the scarlet hunts damage increase however this is obviously a lot more reliable this is a flat 10 percent aoe damage all the time the main drawback of eye of sin is that you need an aoe fighter to use it so if you're looking for people to use it on i would definitely recommend valkyria cerberus again is a very good pick for this there was another hero coming out fairly soon called magmus he's not out yet so we don't know about him but his toolkit seems to be entirely aoe focused and he is a fighter so i imagine this will be very good on him as well it does seem like a powerful artifact for sure in certain cases when you have heroes that benefit from it if magmus winds up being a very strong hero then this could be a very important artifact to, to get for him and the last one in the a tier is the flawless blade this increases damage by six percent every four seconds when no damage is taken stacks up to three times but each time you take damage it removes one stack arguably this is not a very good artifact i was considering putting it down to b tier 
One thing to keep in mind of artifacts is there is a big difference in stats between a legendary and a myth artifact. I'll put some screenshots up on screen so you can see the difference in the flat stats you gain from them. It is quite large. However, the reason I have left Flawless Blade at A tier is because it does grant a damage increase of up to 18%. Obviously, fighters are going to be taking damage pretty much all the time. So I think this is probably more usable in heroes that you can stick in the back line or further away or using them on missions where you don't typically take damage. Valkyria, Zilla 2 and Arrogance are the ones that pop into my head instantly because they have long reach and they're more usable in those kind of missions. But we'll need to really see for some testing how it fares. I think it has some potential. It's not going to be good in guild boss mainly because the boss is hitting you fairly regularly and he leaves a burning debuff on you. So I don't think this is a guild boss artifact. It's going to be absolutely useless in gear raid 2 as you are consistently taking damage. It might be beneficial in gear raid 1. So that's kind of the only thing I can really think of at the moment. But I'm interested to hear how other people fare with it. And I will be testing it myself as I do have one copy of it. But on paper it has the potential to be quite powerful. Next up we have the B tier for the fighters. Crystal of Vileness. When dealing damage has a 40% chance of summoning one shadow guard with 80% of the hero's stats to attack enemies for 10 seconds. The effect can be triggered as often as one time every 20 seconds so it has a potential maximum uptime of 50%, not too bad and supposedly this should have 80% of the hero's attack. I don't have this myself. I was told by one of my friends who's tested it that it is actually worse than the Ragnarok and quite a bit worse than Scarlet Hunt. However, I think these were quite short testing. So if you have more information, if you have any thoughts on this, do let me know. I'd be very interested to hear it. As like I said, I don't have it myself. It does have the myth stats and it does actually have a good chance of increasing damage output. So I don't think it's too bad. And the next two from the B tier are both legendary. These are definitely the best fighter legendaries in the game. The Watch Guard's Ambition and Slayer's Presence. Watch guards ambition on a basic attack you have a 10% chance of triggering another basic attack I really like this one personally I give it to my wrath because hey extra chances of triggering attacks is really good especially on heroes who have incremental bonuses on attacks for example wrath has the passive soul basher after every four attacks the next attack deals additional damage I also used the watch guards ambition on arrogance for a while as he has a chance of proccing extra attacks so I thought it might feed into that a bit Generally, I think it's just a very good one. Slayer's Presence, when HP is above 80%, increases damage by 10%. You'll find that you're actually lower than 80% HP more than you would think. I prefer Watch Guard's Ambition for myself, but if you are using the hero in a context where they're unlikely to be under 80% HP, then Slayer's Presence probably wins out. Now we are down to C tier. Part of me is tempted to merge C and D tier as most of these aren't very good at all and I would not really recommend building them. However, I thought I would differentiate because the D tier are really rubbish and the C tier has some potential if you are really struggling for artifacts. C and D are just not really worth investing in, in my opinion. So from the C tier, we have the Nightmare Shadow. It increases your crit rate by 5% for every five attacks. It could stack up to three times. Not a great deal to say here. Basically, your hero should be geared to 100% crit rate anyway. This can be useful if you're struggling to gear a hero and you just want to chuck something on them to help them reach 100% crit rate. So it does have some benefit there. Crit rate is something that can cap. You should be capping it ideally. Chain of Rage increases crit damage by 0.3% for every 1% reduction in HP. This is kind of like a poor man's Ragnarok in a way. You're talking a maximum of 29% bonus from this. So it's not really the strongest. You would think maybe you could use it on a Cerberus if you don't have a Ragnarok, but it's just not really worth building. And for the D tier, we have Voros Rage increases crit rate for every reduction in HP. So this is is similar to the chain of rage it's just crit rate instead of crit damage once again you shouldn't really need these kind of things for your crit rate and the north's horn when shielded increases crit rate by 10 percent and when the shield disappears the crit rate persists for another six seconds the same issue really you kind of should already have your cap crit rate ideally without relying on artifacts you want to be pumping as much damage as possible and since crit rate can cap it's typically not too hard to reach that and just focus on attack this is more late game, of course. So earlier game, you can use these things if you don't have any of the above options, but I would recommend the above options first, of course. Another problem with the North Horn is it stipulates when shielded. So you need to have a shielding team. The only real heroes who are going to be reliably putting out shields aren't super common. And in the star tier, we have Lucky Legacy. I really like this one. I use it on my Dalin. And basically, whenever you restore cost, cost is the resource you use to place heroes in a mission, there is a 5% chance to double the amount. Dalin has a passive called Rebel. Every 30 seconds, she restores 13 points of cost. So this will grant you a 5% chance of doubling that to 26. And max skill will be 15 cost every 25 seconds, obviously doubling to 30 cost if you get this lucky proc. Outside of the heroes of Cyrene and Dalin, Lucky Legacy has no real use. All right, moving on, we have the S tier for mages, Skull of Desecration. Damage received is increased by 20%, while AoE damage 
is increased by 25%. I have this on my Viana, it is incredibly powerful. 25% more damage is just nuts. Taking more damage, I don't really care. She's not a defender, she's not supposed to be taking damage. I use her in my Gear Raid 2 Stage 21 team. I used her to clear it for the first time with no power of dominance. So even in that level, it wasn't increasing the damage she took by enough for it to matter at all. In my opinion, this is definitely the best AoE Mage artifact. It's just such a nice increase in damage and I really hope to get more of them. Zealous Manuscript, this was added fairly recently. This is only for Zealous the five star legendary mage for the curse faction and basically it means during his ultimate the enemies also receive 30% less healing. In gear raid 1 there is a boss Elowin and she heals the adds and it makes it super hard to kill them because they're just constantly receiving healing. I was lucky enough to get one of these artifacts and it did help quite a bit but unfortunately it wasn't quite enough to allow me to clear stage 20. Though I think if you have it and you're stuck on stage 19, it will be a huge help. If you have a Z-list, this is absolutely S tier. This is the only thing you want to put on Z-list if you can. Obviously, you can't put it on other people, so it doesn't really matter for other people. But since this is a Z-list exclusive artifact, it is of course S tier and is much better than the other two next to it. And the third for the mages of S tier is Ajax's Rage. Upon making a critical hit, increases crit damage by 20% for 3 seconds. Once again, your crit rate should be basically 100% or just a little bit away from that. So you should have this benefit up all the time. This is a fantastic artifact, mainly for heroes such as Nocturne, for Karmet, for heroes who focus on heavy single target nuking damage. But you can absolutely use this on AoE mages as well, because it is just crit damage after all. I would rate Scarlet Desecration over Ajax's Rage for AoE mages. So for the A tier, we have Tier of Starlight. Attack is increased by 20% when deployed. And when your HP is lower than 80%, the attack increase is reduced to 10%. I don't have this, I haven't tested it myself. It's quite nice to have a bonus to your attack. HP being reduced is going to happen in Gear Raid 2. It's going to happen in Guild Boss. And it probably, but you're probably good in Gear Raid 1. This shouldn't trigger too often, so you should have a nice bonus throughout. Arguably contending with Ajax's Rage, it's just Ajax's Rage bonus is a bit more reliable. The Blue Sea Ice Ring is ranked to A tier, which may surprise some people. When dealing damage, there is a 25% chance of slowing down the enemy by 50% for two seconds. So this doesn't increase your damage at all. It simply slows. The reason I really like it is most AoE mages in the game are in the Curse Faction and the Curse Faction Lords grant a bonus that increases damage dealt to enemies that are under CC effects, including slow. So before I got the Zealus's manuscript, I really liked this on Zealus because he was able to place down large AoEs that were proccing Blue Sea Ice Ring like crazy, which meant loads of slows, which meant lots of damage increase from the Curse Faction benefit. Aside from that, it can be really nice to just slow enemies down, so I, I actually do think it is quite a nice one. Then at B tier, we have the Eye of the White Tower, after being deployed, you receive one of the following buffs at random, either 13% attack bonus or 20 attack speed. So out of those two, you really want the attack percentage bonus. It's random, which is quite unreliable. And then down at C tier, we have the spellcaster's echo. You recover 10% rage after using a skill. So when you ultimate, you'll get 10% of your rage back straight afterwards. This is quite nice just because some people have really high rage caps. It's just a nice boost to get, but it's not the best as it doesn't really increase your damage. It just kind of helps you get your ult up a bit sooner, which I think is quite important for some heroes. Nightmare Samsara restores 5% rage every 5 attacks. So this is really going to depend on what hero you're using and how often they attack. For someone like Viona, she's just absolutely murdering with her ultimate and there isn't much left afterwards to attack with. And her ultimate has a really low rage cap. So I don't think this is particularly useful for heroes with very low rage caps because this is a percentage restore of rage you want to use this on heroes with a high rage cap such as Karmet. And at D tier we have the Soul Eating Crystal restores 3% rage when killing the target of 5 second cooldown. The reason I think this is pretty rubbish is because most mages are going to be killing with their ultimate active and if it's a 5 second cooldown it's going to eat a massive amount of your ultimate's time and if it's an AoE hero such as Viona then her entire ultimate is only going to get a 3% rage restore because it will all be within 5 seconds any kills that are made using it. So I think it kind of sucks, it doesn't really fit the way mages work which is front loading a bunch of damage usually an AoE. And finally we have the Watchguard's Wisdom. Every 1% increase in rage increases the chance of triggering an, an extra instance of basic attack by 0.2%. The effect can be triggered up to one time at every 5 seconds. So every time your rage restores by 1% there is an extra 0.2% chance of triggering another basic attack. So it seems kind of interesting but it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to read. From the sounds of it it's dependent on you having massive rage cap and sitting on your rage cap to maybe generate more basic attacks. Mages are built for their ultimates. That's kind of what they're there for. Most of them focused entirely on their ultimate. So this isn't really the, too useful, unfortunately. Next up, we have the Marksman at S tier. This is the Never Messenger. When dealing multiple instances of damage to one same target in a row, increases the damage up to three times. It's a typo on my website. I'll fix that. 
the effect disappears after changing target. So that's up to 15% bonus damage. And you're going to have that almost all the time. Most marksmen hit pretty fast and quite reliably. And for guild boss, this is obviously very nice. It's just a 15% damage increase for any marksman who has this in guild boss. So I think this is easily the best because it's just so reliable and so consistent. Sharpshooter's Crest. When there are no enemies within one tile, AoE damage is increased by 20%. The reason is is that A tier and not for S tier is because most marksmen are not AoE focused. However, for someone like Hatsut, this could easily be S tier. If you can place her in a position where there's no one next to her, a 20% AoE increase is very nice. And obviously, with her AoE, the Never Messenger won't be very useful as you're going to be resetting your stacks constantly by changing targets with how her damage is spread. So I think for someone like Hatsut, the Sharpshooter's Crest is probably S tier. It's worth mentioning as well that Nyx and Maul would probably really enjoy Sharpshooter's Crest, especially Maul as he is dealing massive AoE damage from very far away. At the B tier we have Blood Drinker. This is the artifact you can buy from the guild store. This grants you a 10% life steal when dealing damage. I really don't think much of this artifact mainly because marksmen are not supposed to be taking too much damage. I don't really know much content where this is really needed and I would personally rather save my guild coins than spend them on an artifact which doesn't increase DPS at all. But saying that it is still a myth artifact and it will still grant more stats than the legendary counterpart. So for the legendaries at B tier we have Shadow Gaze. Increases attack by 10% for every 5 attacks lasting 5 seconds. So it's basically a 10% attack increase. So long as you can make up to 5 attacks within a 5 second window you can keep it up permanently. So this is obviously dependent on how fast the attack speed of your hero is. And then we have the Broken Nightmare. Increases attack by 3% for each basic attack up to 2 seconds up to 3 stacks. So again so long as you have less than 2 attack interval this will be pretty good. At C tier we have Tariel's Gaze. When dealing crit damage there's a 15% chance to ignore 30% of the target's defense and magic resistance for 3 seconds. Heroes like Tazira and Tario herself would benefit from this. Anyone who hits rapidly will be able to make the most out of this benefit. It seems like it could actually be pretty good on paper. Again though, it's a legendary so the stats are down. And it's not a reliable increase in damage at all. This is only a chance on crit and the effect that you get on that chance is not super long. Taunting Gaze. The further the target is, the more damage. Every one tile damage increases by 2%. This one I think is really good for Tario since her ult allows her to hit across the map. It's also good for Acetram who has massive attack range and it is pretty good for Maul as well as he hits them very far. Nyx also has a very good attack range so you want to use this on heroes with very long attack ranges. And the Watchguard's Disguise damage to airborne units increased by 10%. So this is basically a 10% damage increase but only on the specific scenario. So it's not awful by any means. Most of the time marks are going to be used for that kind of content and we are anticipating Gear Raid 3 new stages at some point. So maybe it will have a bit more use then, but again, I would probably rather have a myth item just for the flat stats. So moving on, we have the healer F tier. Gift of Hope is the one I've put there. It increases healing effect by 30% when healing a hero with less than 30% HP. The reason I put this one at the top is because the time when you most need to heal heroes is when they are lower than 30% HP. Healing a hero for 30% extra if they're above 80% HP, for example, would be kind of rubbish. The most important time to heal them is when they're actually more injured. Obviously, it would be great to prevent them getting there, but it's very clutch when it does come into effect. So I think it is a pretty good artifact for that reason. I use this on my Dolores in Guild Boss. As she can solo heal using this. That's not recommended, but she's able to do it. And it definitely does come into play. You do notice in the later stages when the heroes start to get lower on HP, the Gift of Hope kicking in and really ramping up the healing. At A tier, I have the Jungle Relic. This one is mainly because I don't think there's that much content in the game where the healer is completely untouched and the tank is getting absolutely squashed. Gear Raid 2 is the most healing intensive content in the game right now. And very often the healer is hurt. There is constant persistent damage going on. There are enemies throwing boulders at the healers in the middle. And, you know, there's just generally a lot of damage going out in all ways. So the jungle relic wouldn't be in effect for a bunch of it. Though potentially it can be. It depends on your team. If you have heavy shielding going on, then it's not impossible. So I think it definitely does have a place and it can be quite helpful. At B tier we have Niniv's Mercy. Increased healing by 10% upon entering combat. So this is a bit more reliable. It's just a flat increase all the time. But again, it's a legendary. So the base stats are going to be quite a bit lower. Lantern of Radiance. Increases AoE healing effect by 3% for every one allies within the attack range. Stacking up to four times. So this has a max increase of 12% assuming you have allies within range. So this one is slightly better than Niniv's Mercy if you are an AoE healer. The Norse Glory when healing a unit to full HP there is a 20% chance of granting the unit a shield equal to 20% of its max HP lasting for 10 seconds. The effect can only be triggered one time every five seconds. I have experimented with this with Elowin. My Elowin is chucking pretty big heals. I think they're around 16,000 per heal at the moment so I thought this would be quite a good complement for her. She's very likely to overheal, but I didn't really see much benefit from it. But I thought this, this could potentially be useful in Gear Raid 2 just to help deal with some of the damage by shielding. 
At D tier we have Child of the Trees, increases the healing effect by 20%, however for every ally within the attack range you reduce it by 5%. There is no cap on that either, no stacks or anything, so if you have 3 allies in range it goes down to only 5%, 4 allies in range it's only 0%. I'm not sure if it includes the caster as well, if so then it's dreadful. Either, either way it kind of just sucks, you not, I can't really think of any content where you're going to have less than 2 other heroes down. And then finally for the healers at D tier we have the Watchguard's Fortune, there is a chance equal to 10% of crit rate that one healing will occur so this means if your healer has 100% crit rate there is a 10% chance whenever that healer heals that they'll heal again so it's like a double heal building to 100% crit rate is not super easy to do especially on a healer it's not impossible you could absolutely gear towards this in substats and not have any trouble because it's not that contested among healing gear so I think it would be entirely possible to build a healer with like fully focused on their, you know, their primary healing stat attack or HP and healing effect and then also get them up to 100% crit rate. But the problem is it's only going to be granting them 10% chance, which isn't really that high. So I'd, I think this is quite rubbish because you would need pretty good gear to meet the requirements to make this actually proc ever. And it just wouldn't be good enough. Every time you upgrade this artifact though, it goes up by 2% chance. So if you maxed it for some reason, then it should be around 20% chance. So then you'll end up with a 100% crit rate, a 20% chance of double healing every time you heal, which isn't dreadful, honestly. It could have a lot of potential. It's just a bit weird. So I'm interested to see how that goes. If they add healers who have crazy benefits on their on-hit attacks, then this could become really powerful. But as it stands right now, there's no need for that. And I would rather take the flat stats and I would rather take these other benefits. But it might be one to watch in future. You never know. And finally, in the star tier, we have the spirit horn. So this grants you 25% of your rage when deployed. So the reason I have this in the star tier is for Gwendolyn primarily. Gwendolyn's ultimate grants a massive shield and being able to cast it instantly upon being deployed is just a lifesaver in gear raid 2. I know it helped me progress initially and I know it helped a few other people on my server clear it for the first time. Being able to ensure that she always gets her ultimate as soon as she's placed is just perfect for timing. You can also give this to a Dolores for those kind of runs to time things better in gear raid 2. So it's, it's a very specific thing. It's really not very good outside of this because this benefit is only going to happen on placement on the hero. So yeah, I think it's interesting. I think it definitely has some benefits, but it is very niche. All right, so we're on the defender column, the defender S tier. Olag's wall increases block capacity by one and it increases physical and magical damage reduction by 4% for every blocked unit stacking up to four times. A defender's base block is three. A fighter's base block is two. With this artifact, a Defender will be able to block four enemies, which I find incredibly helpful for when progressing in the campaign. Not to mention it actually reduces damage for every block stack. So personally for me, I think Olag's War is very, very good. It's just so reliable to increase your defender's block amount. This is also incredibly good for someone like a soldier who's ultimate, which does gain benefits based on the amount of block capacity she has. So definitely use this on a soldier. Next up, we have Regal Majesty. I hear a lot of people prefer to use this. My personal preference is Olag's War. I like Olag's War because it does increase the damage. It does reduce the damage you receive, which I think is quite nice. Whereas Regal Majesty increases the healing you receive. So it kind of depends on what the issue is. If you're getting one shot, then reducing the damage is nice. But if overall you're just not able to heal the hero enough, then Regal Majesty is nice. But both of them are genuinely very good options. And Bloodfirst is one of the new ones released. I don't know anyone who's got one at the moment. The reason I put it at S tier as well is because defenders are tanky enough. I don't really have any issue keeping defenders alive. They're pretty much immortal. Only Gear Ray 2 can threaten defenders at the moment. And outside of that, defenders are kind of hard-pressed to find a place. The reason I would like to get Blood first is I would put it on Captain Reeve and build him as a damage dealer and just see what it's like. I think it gives potential to make defenders do a bit more damage and to see what they're like in those use cases. So Blood first interests me for that reason. And the defender tier is a bit weird. I don't have any at the A tier at the moment because generally I don't think many of them warrant it. And I do think most of these are pretty equal for what they're possible to be used for. So going down to B tier, we have another new artifact, Goddess's Grace. Increases defense by 10%, gains an extra 3% defense bonus for every 10 seconds on the battlefield, stacking up three times. So that grants a total of 19% defense increase. The reason I don't rate this very highly is barely anyone scales on defense. And one of the only defenders who actually does is... As whore and he kind of sucks and he's also limited as well so not really the most important artifact here it does have stats on it so it should be better than some of the other ones but honestly i think i would prefer death Nail or rex's vow over goddess's grace as it is but maybe there'll be more changes to defense maybe it'll become more relevant in future we'll have to see then we have death Nell. this is in my opinion the best legendary artifact for defenders increases own defense by five percent upon entering combat 
but the main thing is whenever your HP drops to 40% or below, you instantly heal 15% of your max HP. This only happens one time per deployment though. So this is not one shot protection. If you get absolutely crushed in one hit, you will still die, I believe. But if you do drop to like just a tiny amount of health, it will save you. So it's quite nice just to get a self healing. I think this is very, very useful, honestly, for quite a bit of content. And I use it a lot in my gear raid two teams. Next up, we have Rex's Vow. This is incredibly good for gear raid two. If you're progressing in gear raid two, this could arguably be at A tier as it reduces the damage taken by 10% when protected by shields. And one of the predominant strategies for gear raid two relies heavily on shielding your defenders. So I, th I think it's got quite a lot of potential there. At C tier, we have Watchguard's Unity, 10% max HP. Not a lot to say there. It makes you tankier. That's good, right? And at D tier, Heart of Fawn, when taking damage, there's an 8% chance of dealing damage to the attacker equal to 10% of self's max HP. Even a super geared defender that's not going to do that much my bro here has over a hundred thousand health so that'll be doing just a bit more than ten thousand damage and that's only an eight percent chance so it's just so low it's, it's kind of nothingy really if we have content in future where enemies seem to do like ridiculously fast instances of damage to you then maybe this will come back and maybe there'll be some interesting cheese strategy there but for the time being there's nothing that jumps to mind nightmare serpent restores three percent max hp for every five attacks defenders typically don't hold by themselves anywhere because they will never kill the enemy in time and usually they're tanking up anyway and usually they don't hit very fast so they wouldn't even proc this that often so it just seems kind of useless to me and finally we have the north's will restores 10 percent hp when the shield disappears so this isn't awful but it kind of infers that you're going to have someone shielding you already and if you're shielding yourself, you're probably a very strong defender. Not many can. It's kind of Isolde and King Haas are the main ones that to mind. Broke here. And they're already incredibly powerful. I would rather give them something else that gives them some more utility than a little bit of healing. Even stats I would prefer to take as they would have stuff that scales on the stat. Okay, so that covers the tier list pretty much. It's quite a long, so I appreciate if you've made it all the way through to here. On the website, there were little stipulations at the bottom for the unique ones. So these are just going over what we've already talked about in this video. But I'll add to these if more stipulations occur. If people point out things, I will update this. The reason I've moved to using tier lists on my website is that I can easily adjust them in real time. As you can see, there's a heroes tab. There is a currently updated hero tier list on there. I will be working on a video for that soon. But if you do want to get a first look at it, go check out my website. It is there now. And that is the current tier list with the new hero. So... Check it out if you're interested. There are a couple of other things to talk about regarding artifacts. Artifacts grant your hero a load of BP, which is battle power. Now, this is kind of just bragging rights as far as I'm concerned. However, some parts of the game do seem to scale based on your BP, which I think is super weird. But for example, in Arena, the higher your BP, the stronger the enemies. In Tide, the higher your BP, the the more you win it's super weird i don't get how tide works but bp has a massive effect on it so why does that matter in relation to artifacts well the newer artifacts grant higher bp zealous's manuscript the skull of desecration flawless blade eye of sin sharpshooter's crest blood first and goddess's grace will all be granting more bp than scarlet hunt for example or ajax's raid i don't know why they've done this it's kind of just a weird power creep but yeah, it's, it might be worth taking into account that that is one thing. And lastly, and very importantly, another thing to consider are drop rates. Skull of Desecration may be incredible. However, I promise you are going to have 20 Ajax's Rages before you get even two Skull of Desecrations. These are incredibly rare. And upgrading artifacts is way more powerful on stats. I'll show you two here. One will be a Scarlet Hunt at level 10 and no upgrades and the other one will be a scarlet hunt at max upgrades so level 25 and you will see just how different the stats are so even though some of these new artifacts are rated quite well it's so hard to get hold of them that you're not really going to be able to upgrade them very much one of the things that's so appealing about scarlet hunt and ajax's rage is that they're just so commonly dropped you can max them quite reliably if you're end game and if you're farming that is if you're mid game don't worry about it too much so how do i know the drop rates of these things well i made a video a while ago you may have seen about fusing 100 artifacts since then a bunch of players have been submitting their artifacts to me thank you so much for that i really appreciate it pae8 has been huge in sending me loads of artifacts i've also had a whole bunch coming in from max zero inso from blood spirit so thank you so much to the community there's a whole bunch of other people i'm sorry if i haven't mentioned you but i really do appreciate the help i've got compiling this and i'll show you it 1000 120 artifact fusions these are all myth fusions these are all entered based on screenshots sent to me by players i know and trust as well as some of my own and these have been compiled over the last month or so and as you can see from the rates over here the epic rates are listed at 30 percent legendaries are listed at 50 percent and myths are listed at 20 percent and you can see on the right how many were summoned 
out of those 1100 and then you can see what the actual rate that i found from my data shows so you can see the epics refusing at a 32 percent rate instead of 30 percent legendaries refusing at 51 and a half percent instead of 50 percent and myths were at 16 and a half percent instead of 20 percent so myths did seem to have quite a bit less fusion rate normally you could say well this is you know it might just be the statistics it could just be how it rolled out but a sample size of 1100 it is a bit suspicious to be quite far off. That is actually quite a large difference between 20% and 16.5%, which makes me a bit concerned that the rate isn't quite accurate, but I don't quite, I don't want to make a strong stance on it yet, but it doesn't look great. However, the main issue with the artifacts is if you take a look here, this table below the myth artifacts are listed here. The count of 185 comes from the myths that were fused above. So from the initial sample of 1100 artifacts fused, 185 or 16.5% were myths. And this is the distribution of those myths that were fused as well as the percentage chance. So this should be a reasonably accurate mirror of the chance of getting them. Obviously the super rare ones have 0% so we don't actually know what their rate is, we just know it's stupidly low. But one thing to note which I think is very interesting, Gift of Hope to Scarlet Hunt are all some of the original artifacts that were in the game for a long time since I started playing the game in October of 2022. Blue Sea Ice Ring to Sharpshooter's Crest were introduced around Christmas of 22. And the Eye of Sin to the Zealous Manuscript were introduced just a couple of weeks ago at the start of March 23. It appears overwhelmingly that the artifacts introduced recently and from Christmas have a much lower drop rate. I'm not sure why the Blue Sea Ice Ring seems to have a different drop rate, but either way, something is very clear from these results. There are two drop tables, and it seems to be that there's roughly a 95% chance of getting one of these artifacts, and there's about a 5% chance of getting one of these artifacts. That's kind of what I'm inferring from the data. So what does that really tell us? For me personally, I don't want to touch artifact material raid again. I have no interest in farming it anymore. The return is just disgustingly low. If you are an end game player like myself and you already have a bunch of artifacts maxed out, you've already maxed a Scarlet Hunt or two, you've maxed a Never Messenger, you've maxed your healing one, you've maxed a couple Ajax's rages. Farming for a tiny chance to get a Scarlet Desecration or a Zealous's manuscript, the odds of getting one are appallingly low. Not to mention there are a bunch of others in here that aren't super good that will eat that chance as well. So considering that most likely there's a separate pool, there are two drop tables and one is 5%. For me personally, considering how much stamina it costs to farm, I just wouldn't bother touching it at this point. I, I'm hoping the developers see this video and do something about it. I have been spamming this in the official Discord, this table I've been working on, because I would like to raise awareness to the fact that it's just not good at the moment trying to farm for the new artifacts. It really isn't worth it in my opinion to be farming for the rest of them. The rate is just so appallingly low. It is a very big damage increase so if you have nothing better to do but with them introducing new gear sets I would just generally much prefer to farm for those. Anyway it's a, a bit of a long rant but I do think it's important to share and I wanted to make people aware of the rate differences. But with that, I think we'll head the video off as it's been very long. Thank you so much if you've joined me the entire way. I appreciate your patience. Uh, do like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd appreciate that as well. Uh, thank you very much. Have a lovely one. Take care and bye-bye.